Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Laura Wilkie with Down Home with Lemon Pie and I'm gonna share with you guys today the skills, the basic skills that we think in our home that your children and our children should have before they graduate high school. Hi guys, welcome back. I'm Laura Wilkie with Down Home with Lemon Pie. I'm a Christian homeschool mama. I have seven little ones and I have been telling you guys for quite some time um, different things that I thought your kids and my kids should know before they graduate high school, before they leave our homes and go out into the real world to build their families. And um, I had a viewer request to do a video of just those kinds of things. What kinds of things should our kids know? What kinds of things? There's so many things that as an adult I know I have had to learn and so many things I learned in school that I have not actually used. So um, I'm wanting to flip that in our house with our own children and learn more of the real world skills, the more of the things that we need to know and that I don't want them to have to figure out on their own later. So um, that is what this video is about. Before I get started, I wanna tell you guys, it is Homeschool Fellowship Friday. This is the day that I get to share with you guys curriculum reviews and um, homeschool things, tips, um, encouragement, all of those things, what we're doing in our home, what works, what doesn't work. And um, if you missed it, I just finished last week the God Schooling book series. It had seven videos. They were very successful. You guys liked those, so I will look into doing another book as well. But um, yeah, that was just finished. So if you need to look that up, it is in the Homeschool Fellowship Friday playlist if you want to go back and look at those. But that kind of is where a lot of this stems from. So if you're watching this video, you may find help and encouragement in those as well. That's why I'm mentioning it. Okay, so let's get started. I have a whole list of things here. Um, look at this. Of things that, you know, I've been thinking about, things that I want our kids to know, things that I personally have had to learn as an adult that would have been nice to have known already. And, um, also things that I have looked to other adults, other mamas, and have thought, wow, that is so awesome that you guys know that. I want to know that too. So those things all kind of got, came into play when I made this list. Um, things that I see other moms do and I just think, you know, I don't know how to do that and I wish I did. And that is kind of where this list came from, like I said, but um, it's not really in a perfect uh organized order and maybe that is one of the things i should have on here but um anyway i want to share these with you guys okay so let's look at basic just basic things things that i went to college not knowing how to do um or not knowing very well how to do okay just basic things um banking banking is a big one how credit works how debit works how savings works loans, interest, all of these kinds of things that all can encompass the banking world are still, even now, um, a lot of them are still kind of foreign to me. The ones that start talking about APR and all these kinds of technical terms, I don't, I mean, I'm being completely honest, I don't know what a lot of those mean and I usually have to look it up or kind of, wait a minute, what's that? Um, that actually comes into play. We're going to be doing some real world math that we are changing in our homeschool. So I'll talk about that in our curriculum video I showed you, or I told you guys that it was coming up. Um, but that kind of stuff, things that I've seen other people or that we had to learn as adults, how to do your taxes. I mean, just basic things. Um, how to do your taxes, how to make a budget, how to stick to a budget, how to use um, your time wisely. Time management is a big one. And um, that's something that it seems like we don't know how to do. Um, how to go places, how to be there on time, how to be respectful of other people's time. Um, yes, I am one of those people who, not more often than not, but occasionally, really occasionally, uh, we're late. Um, we just are. And, um, you know, that's something I need to work on and I want to grow on, but it is something that I also want to teach the kids to be able to better manage their time. Um, something that I had to learn as an adult, but probably is being taught in schools today. This is probably something that actually, I would say schools are probably doing a good job on this one. Um, and I don't say that about a lot of things, but social media, how social media works, 
email safety, internet safety, I do see those kinds of things um, being taught and being brought into the light. Um, but also, I have not seen this one, identifying spam in various forms, whether it's coming across in an ad or whether it's in um, an email or if it is somebody's account got hacked and you get this strange message from somebody. Um, just all the various types of ways that we are scammed, really, um, with spam. And that's a whole thing. I see there's a YouTube channel, I can't remember it right off the top of my head, but there's a YouTube channel that you can actually watch where they go out and catch the scammers and the people, the tricks they do, the, the things that they tell people, the when they call them and they tell them they owe this money or they need this um, account uh, information or whatever, that kind of stuff needs to be taught and that is not that was something that's new i mean i couldn't have been prepared for that because that's new and um but anyway that is something that i would like to teach our kids and kind of maybe even show them that that youtube channel because it is really enlightening as far as all the different things that go on in that world and um it's probably has some language so before you go showing it you may want to preview it but my husband and i've watched it in the past and it's eye-opening how much is going on in the world so um, what about um, home management? That is something I have had to learn completely on my own. Um, I grew up in a house with just my sister and my mom, small family. My mom was working, so there wasn't how to be a stay-at-home mom. I had to learn how to do that, and that's something that I would like to teach my kids, how to run a household. It is like a machine. It is like a job. It is like a business. It's like you have employees because your kids have little responsibilities and different things and things that have to be done. There's deadlines. It's the same way. And we need to know how to do that. Mamas, especially your girls. Um, meal planning. That is a huge one. Um, I, I actually personally do a reverse meal planning. I'll talk more about that in another video where I actually do the shopping and then plan the meals. That way I can keep track of sales and things. But um, but meal planning, yeah. And having a, a collection of recipes already that they know how to make um, easily that don't require a ton of work or a ton of things or whatever, um, but just simple basic things that they can make, that kind of stuff. Just, I call those like your back pocket tips. Um, having like the recipes or the things in your back pocket that you can pull out and you already know how to do them. Um, basic housekeeping, that is a big one too. I have had to learn that as an adult. Housekeeping, um, how to get stains out of clothes, um, how to mop, how to vacuum, how to dust properly. There's um, laundry techniques, all these things. There's all the ways that we kind of get by, if that makes sense. But then there's like the actual way how to do it. And um, it would be nice to know both, really. Um, in our family, we do more of a more of a get by laundry routine. I talked about that in our laundry schedule. If you want to check that out, it's in the Mother Culture Monday video playlist. And um, but I told you why in that video. And I do know how to do proper laundry, how to sort it by colors, how to do all of that. Um, but I, as an adult, I had to learn stain removing tips. I did not know how many stains my kids' clothes would get and how to get them out. So that is something that we should know. I would say also about having schedules. Again, I have schedules. I have created them, but I had to learn that as an adult. And I put them in my Mother Culture Monday playlist. If you want to go back and look at those, um, that has a wealth of information there. And I'm continuously adding more. So do subscribe if you are finding this video infor informative because... A lot of these tips and things that I'm talking about, I have playlists for or videos for or I'm going to be making videos for. So if that is something you need, do subscribe. Okay, going back to cooking and basic meals, just having some things in their pocket that they know how to make. How to make gravy from scratch. How to make mashed potatoes from scratch that taste good. Um, how to do biscuits, homemade biscuits from scratch and how to do them from the store-bought. How to do um, basic bread, how to do cornbread, I mean just some basic things, how to do a pot of chili, how to do mac and cheese, how to do pasta, how to do hamburgers or whatever, just basic basic things. I think, and this was my own fault because I did not feel like it was something I needed to know um, when I was a teenager, but 
I think when I left home, I think I knew about three recipes, maybe, and they were all processed foods, okay? So I knew how to make spaghetti, but like from a kit. And I knew how to make, um, let me see, I knew how to make eggs, but they really weren't that great. I knew how to warm things up in the oven, like I knew how to make chicken nuggets that were frozen, that kind of stuff. I knew how to make that, that pre-made stuff, or the stuff that has a box with a recipe on it. I knew how to do that, that's just obvious. But I didn't really have any just regular recipes that were just normal things. I just always thought, well, I'll just read the recipe. But that's a whole other thing for preppers. Um, that is something you should probably know because, or have written down in a hard copy form because all of my recipes were always on an internet website. And if the internet goes down, I'm just saying, if the internet goes down, you won't have access to those. So that's a whole nother thing that's about preppers and homesteading and things, but, um, but that kind of stuff, knowing how to do basic recipes, basic cooking, how to shop for groceries. I remember to this day, the first couple times I went grocery shopping by myself and how confident I felt when I was going and then how lost I felt when I got there. Um, I thought I knew what I was doing and then when I got there, I'm thinking, what in the world? I don't know which meat I need. I have no idea what to even use any of these meats for. Well, how do I know which one I need to get? Um, yeah, and I definitely didn't know appropriate um, like budgeting. Like, is this a better deal? Is that a better deal? Is this, um, you know, this is a bigger one. It costs less or it costs more. I didn't know how to figure all of that out. And that is something I'm already teaching my kids. Um, but here's another one. How about how to cook for others? how to cook for people who have different tastes than you or allergies, but also how to cook for service. Like what kind of meal would you take um, if somebody had a baby or was sick and you needed to take them a meal? That is something I have had to work on as an adult. What kind of meals can they easily warm up? What kind of meals can they have in the freezer ready to go? Um, those kind of things. I think mamas who know these things are amazing mamas. And that is something that I've had to learn is what kind of things am I going to take to somebody else who is in need, who has a baby, like I said, who has an injury, who is sick, who has whatever kind of need, and we're bringing them meals. Um, what about potluck ideas? We're Baptists, so we do a lot of potluck things. And without fail, I feel like it's always, what do I bring? I don't know what to bring. And I feel like if I had just maybe a list and I should probably do this, uh, made be a list of eight or 10 different kinds of foods that I would say, okay, these are like in my back pocket, the potluck meals that are easy, that I know how to make, that kind of work for everything. Um, yes, there's a few things that everybody does. Everybody does a salad or a fruit salad. Everybody does some sort of pasta salad. Everybody does um, like deviled eggs or something like that. But then there's those really yummy meals, like those really yummy dishes that you're thinking, what is this? I wanna know how to make this. Those are the ones I'm talking about. That's what I want to have. Those that aren't just the norm that everybody's gonna bring. Everybody's gonna bring a veggie tray. Everybody's gonna bring a meat and cheese tray. I don't want that, I want something else. So those kinds of things, potluck ideas, cooking for others, service meals, crowd cooking, okay? I thought this was something you would learn as you have more kids. You just learn to double the recipe. However, I was in a mom group recently and there was a mom and I, this just never even crossed my mind. There was a mom and she said, our pastor is coming over for dinner and they, they're like, I think she said they had seven or eight kids. So there was a crowd now that she was having to cook for and she said, I don't know what to make for this many people. And I thought that is something that we should teach. We should know even if we don't have a large family, what kind of meals we can make for a large family. And as a large family, I'm just gonna say, it does not always have to be pasta. Yes, pasta is cheap, there's other cheap options. So just having some crowd options. I will do some videos for these if you guys are wanting to teach these to your kids. Um, I will create some videos to help you guys with that. But some crowd cooking meal ideas. Okay, what about homestead skills? Um, just basic things that we should know. I'm reading a book right now. It's about the Nazis. It's about that time period. And um, I think I shared it with you guys. Yes, I did. In our book outlet video, it's the Bielski brothers. And they took a group of people, Jews, and they lived out in the forest and they didn't have hardly any supplies. And 
one of the things that I just was reading is they found these, they were literally starving and they found these berries. They didn't know if they were edible berries, if they could eat them or not. So they, they, some of them did and some of them did and they didn't really know. And it turned out they were raspberries. Now that has kind of burned some information in my mind. We need to know how to hunt and gather natural food. Should we ever be in a situation, maybe it's not as drastic as the Holocaust or a governmental shutdown or attack or something like that. Maybe it's just something basic, like you're camping and there's an emergency and you need food. And, or maybe you're in a car accident and you're having to walk somewhere. Maybe there's food or something you can find on the way. Maybe you're having to survive on your own for, for whatever reason. I just feel like these are things we should know, especially native to your area. So yes, for lots of places, but native to your area at the very basic hunting and gathering. It talked about also they had to kill a horse and eat it raw. Ah, can you imagine? Um, anyways, basic hunting and gathering skills, I think are a must, um, how to create a, a shelter, how to live off the land, how to raise animals, how to garden, um, just basic survival skills, how to do different things with a pocket knife or how to make a fire. Just, I mean, like literally just basic things. Um, and then of course, old fashioned skills like canning and sewing, um, again, with the gardening, we are terrible gardeners. We're hoping that we can get better because we're in a different climate now where I think it's going to be a lot better. But when we were in Texas, everything's just hot. It's like a desert and you got to water that sucker constantly and at the right time of day. And it is literally a skill. Gardening is a skill. We think it's just something simple, but these are things that, I mean, even 50 years ago, maybe 70 years ago, um, everybody had. And it seems like these are the things we're not teaching. We're not teaching our boys to be men. We're not teaching our girls to be ladies. We're not teaching any of that. We're just kind of letting it all go. And that is when everyone will take advantage of you. So um, let's look at some other things. Basic home repair, basic home maintenance. Um, just to give you some idea how to clean the oven. Do you know how to do that? Do your kids know how to do that? How to clean the shower, how to, or how often to change the air filters? Do you know how to do that? Do your kids, how to get firewood? If firewood is a thing in your home, um, or in your area where you live, it wasn't when we were in Texas and so much here, it's a necessity. You have to cut the firewood and have it ready to go for the winter. Um, how about mowing? weed eating, how to shovel snow, if that's an area in your area, whatever it is, um, basic home repair, basic maintenance, and when to do those kinds of things, what time of year or what month or um, how frequently, those kinds of things, just basic skills. Um, how about basic plumbing? When you get a clog in that potty, do you have to call or in that sink, do you have to call or is it something that you can probably do yourself? I am so blessed that my husband has a lot of these skills, a lot of these skills. Some of them he learned as a kid or teenager. Some of them he has had to figure out along the way. Some of them he has YouTube videoed to figure out how to do. But again, he's figured them out and he knows how to do them and I'm hoping he's able to pass those skills on to our kids, um, particularly my boys basic car repair, basic car maintenance. How often do you change the tires? How do you change the tires? Do you need to rotate them? Um, what about oil filters? We just learned that you actually still need to, we, I know maybe we didn't live in a snow place before, but we just learned that you can't frequently have to wash your car in the winter. Um, because the, the salt from the road gets up under there and you have to wash it out. So, um, living in Texas, that wasn't a thing. We didn't have to salt the roads, really. You didn't do that. So, but here it is. And so here we learned that you actually have to wash the car on a regular basis in winter, just like in summer. So just, you know, basic things that you need to know how to buy a car. How about that? How to identify the problem that the car is having? I remember being in, I think I was in high school or college and, um, I was driving down the highway and my tire blew out 
and I just had to pull over and then I didn't know what to do. Fortunately, it was in a time when I did have a cell phone so I could call family to come help me. And while I was waiting for them, another gentleman, fortunately he was a gentleman, stopped, said he had a young girl, daughter about my age and wanted to see what kind of help I needed. And, um, but so anyway, he was able to help me, but they came, they changed the tire and were able to fix it and all of that. But just having to know how to do all of that, I could have, that could have been a really hard time. That could have been a really big thing. So just basic things. How about um, basic organizing and decluttering, learning to let things go. That is something I had a big problem with. Um, if somebody buys your kid an outfit and you don't like it, I felt like I had to keep it even though I hated it. Um, no, it's okay. It's your kid. It's okay to take it back. In fact, I always tell people, if you don't like it, take it back. Um, here's the receipt. Um, but I do know other people who are like, where's that outfit I bought? I'd like to see a picture of them in it. And who bought you that? I bought you that. I want you to see it. I want you to like it. I want, it's okay if they don't like what you bought them. It's okay. It doesn't, don't take it personal. Learning not to take those kinds of things personal. That goes into another section I have here for healthy relationships. Um, but just learning to let go. You do not have to keep everything everybody ever gave you just because somebody gave it to you. You just don't. That's how we get hoarders and we don't have to be that way. Um, learning to basic organizing like I bought three new shirts I can take three out or maybe I needed three new shirts so they can come in or whatever. Um, just learning to let go. Learning how to rotate those things. Um, how about the basic process for understanding schedules and procedures? This is a big one. We don't live in a place where there's uh, public transportation, so we don't really use bus schedules and that kind of stuff, but I feel like it's something that I should at least be familiar with. Um, how to get on an airplane, how to buy a ticket for an airplane, the process that you go through to ride on the airplane to check in and to get your luggage and all these steps and steps, how frequently or how long in advance you need to get there. Um, honestly, I have not ridden an airplane, but just maybe a handful of times. So these are things that are still kind of new to me. Um, booking a hotel, my husband does that and um, I just let him handle it. But I do know the basic process, of course. And renting a car, same thing. He usually handles all of those kinds of things. But the basic process to know how, it go, how to go about that. Um, I was buying something online the other day for my kiddos and my daughter was watching and she was just fascinated with the process of putting it in your cart and doing like filling out the address and doing all the stuff, just the process of how it works and just to buy something online, just basic, basic things that we kind of take advantage of because we think we do it all the time. It's everybody knows how to do it, but it's things you actually have to be taught. How about determining junk mail from real mail? I used to think as a kid that my mom threw away all kinds of important mail because she would just get the mail and then chunk like half of it and I was thinking what in the world somebody mailed you that you need that and I didn't realize because I was a child the amount of junk mail that you will get in your life and um, now as an adult I can do the same quickly and easily decipher what's real and what's junk but that's something you have to learn so you know having your kids while you do it showing them why is this junk why is this keep or whatever um, what about healing remedies? Just how, what to do when you get sick? Um, what kind of sick do you have to know what kind of healing you need to do? Is it an herb? Is it oils? Is it teas? Is it natural healing? Is it over the counter? When to go to the doctor? It's not every time you feel bad. It's almost never um, if you're in our home. But um, there's just so many ways you can heal yourself that you don't have to go to the doctor. Oh, I have a cough. I need to go to the doctor. Oh, I. I threw up and you go to the doctor. You don't need to, um, but what you can do to kind of dis decode and doctor yourself and heal yourself. There's so much to that. We actually use a lot of that in our nature study. I did the nature video, I'll link it below, about wildcraft. We use that in our home and we have made healing remedies that we're able to use in our home. But, and my kids will know. They know if I have this symptom, I need this oil or I need this treatment, I need um, elderberry or I need this ointment that mommy made or whatever. Um, but learning those kinds of things, because I have had to learn those as an adult, because in my day, you just went to the doctor for everything and you went to get a prescription after that and you just took the prescription, but you don't have to do that. You can actually heal yourselves with natural things and you can make them yourself. You can get them at health food stores. You can get them out in nature. Just 
being able to have those healing remedy skills. Um, so that is a good one. Basic party planning. <laughs> I know it seems silly, but I remember the first birthday party we had for my oldest daughter and we felt like we had to invite everybody we knew, so we did, which meant we couldn't have it at our house, which meant we had to rent a place, and it became this huge production of, um, we had to buy this giant cake because we had all these people that we felt we had to invite, and it does not need to be that way, guys. It just does not need to be that way. So basic party planning, what is, I, I always thought you had to serve a meal at a party. And I remember my in-laws the other day, uh, or maybe I guess a couple years back, even told us, they said, you do realize you don't have to do anything beyond cake and ice cream for a party. You don't have to have mini corn dogs and chips and salsa and a veggie tray and a fruit tray and all this stuff. And she saw what a burden it was putting on us. And I thought, we don't, but every party I go to is like that. And, um, you know, has all the decorations and everything's perfectly matched and everything's beautiful and perfect and the paper matches the decoration, like everything. She, you know, and when I thought about it, it was like, but that's what the world has become. That's what the world has told us we have to do. And it, that we don't have to do that, guys. We don't have to do that. It can be a very simple birthday party. It's, it's still beautiful and fun. And that's the kind I had when I was a kid. I just, for some reason, the world tells us we need to have these elaborate um, events and Pinterest and all of that. And everything needs to match and be cutesy cutesy and the kids don't care. So um, it doesn't need to be that way. But basic party planning, um, how to style hair, how to style hair. Not only my own, how to do your own makeup, not only my own, but how to do your kids, how to do, style your kids hair. I have had to learn as a mama how to cut boys hair, how to cut girls hair, how to braid hair, how to French braid hair, how to do double French. I have had to learn all of these things. If you've been following me for a while, you have walked with me through some of that. I've talked about it and um, just basic things like, like just basic things. You have to learn those kinds of things. Um, gift giving what kinds of gifts are appropriate how much is appropriate to spend on what kind of gift or on who the person is how to write a thank you card i know a girl a lady actually she is awesome at writing thank you cards and when she writes thank you cards they are so deep and thorough and good and meaningful um and they're about more than the gift. They're about you as a person and all of this, um, your relationship with it, with her. They're so good. And when I write thank you cards, they're more of like a three, well, what, what the way I was taught, the, this is not how I do it anymore, but the way I was taught was, thank for example, thank you for the gift you sent. I am so excited to get it or to have it. I'm going to use it like this. Um, thank you again, love. And that was it. Okay, that is so impersonal. So how to write a thorough, complete, beautiful, meaningful thank you card would be appropriate. Um, something that we should learn. And uh, before I get to the most important one of all, it is at the end of this video. Just a minute, let me double check that I have done all the other items first. Text etiquette, that is not the most important, but that is one I left off. Text etiquette is a big one though. Um, what does it mean when you put something in all caps? What does it mean when you put a million exclamation points? And how do you appear, this is one that really bothers me, when you write like a a a a a a a a a like you drag out the words, that is a pet peeve of mine. Maybe I'm old fashioned, I don't know, probably. And I cannot stand that. So I actually encourage my girls not to write like that because I do not like it. I think it makes you look uneducated. Um, it just does. <laughs> but, um, anyway, so, but text etiquette. What is appropriate? How is an appropriate response? The appropriate time between responses? Should you get upset when somebody doesn't respond right away? Um, you know, what, what kinds of things should you consider? That kind of takes me to healthy relationships, which was the last one before my most important one, and how to forgive others, how to let things go, how to understand where others are coming from. 
Um, I do know people who get very offended, very personally, they feel like they're being personally attacked. If, um, for example, that I invite them to the party last, like their last person I invite, or if they um, find out for about something from somebody else, they think I purposely um, have offended them by, you know, not in informing them or whatever. Um, you know, offering forgiveness. We're all humans. It's okay. Um, letting things go. I get, I know people that are very uptight and you kind of feel like you have to walk on eggshells around them. They get very personally, they feel attacked if things go a certain way or don't go a certain way, or if you respond a certain way or you don't respond a certain way. Um, if they text you and you take three days to respond, they think, oh, they don't like me anymore. And you don't need to feel that way. What about like, appropriate space or appropriate behaviors how do you interact with others um i feel like younger people interact with me in a very what i would call high school manner and they think that i need to be there and answer to them at all times and as you grow you start to learn that that's not the case and um, you know, you start learning appropriate behaviors, appropriate space, appropriate things, and um, manners, etiquette, that kind of stuff. And what's appropriate? Is it okay to, you know, ask somebody this, or is it not okay? Is it okay to have them do this for you, or is it not okay? Um, just some basic things, just basic relationship development things. Just basic how to interact with others, I would say. Another thing you may want to consider is... Our world is full of and heading more towards, I fully believe this, persecution, Christian um, persecution with martyrs and things. And I feel like we are heading very quickly into that even faster. And so something I did want to add that you may want to consider, you may want to um, teach something that we are fully teaching in our home is missionary stories, faith-filled heroes, giving those to our children, um, examples that they can lean on when they have these struggles or these persecutions, these things coming against us. It wasn't too long ago that the churches in America were persecuted against were, um, you know, just that kind of touching to see how we were going to react and it's going to get worse. So filling our children with um, giving them those faith-filled heroes, those missionary stories from years past so, so important. And the last one, I saved it for last because it is the absolute most important one and one that I have, again, had to learn as an adult. And it is a Bible study, um, how to study the Bible, how to do a devotional, how to have a Bible study habit, how to read the Bible and understand it, how to find information and what it means but just having a basic bible study habit basic routine um, knowing like i said how to find information how to find what things mean how to do the research just so good so good so that basically wraps up guys my giant list of things that i think our kids should know before they leave our home um, things that i think that we're going to teach them real world skills the things that I've had to learn as an adult and the things that um, aren't being taught in schools. And there's a reason for that. There's a whole reason for that. They don't want us to have these skills. Um, there are more about that later, but basic skills that we should all have. So I hope you guys found this beneficial. If you have not already, do subscribe. You are missing out if you don't because you're going to miss all the great videos. There are videos listed for Mother Culture Monday and Homeschool Fellowship Friday. Look for the playlist if you need all of those videos, and I will see you guys next time.